I think that's if purposely naive. If no, purposely if, naive. if there is a way, to, you're saying no. your, your edge technology will not be used as a as a weapon. It's the, one of the most interesting ways to build a weapon. No, you misunderstand me. What I'm I saying is, I correctly understand you. No, what I'm saying is, the the use cases with consumers, if there is a regulatory environment which the Western world considers reasonable to align that with inputs from China, there is no harm of doing this. That, that is not about the product getting there, it's about understanding a regulatory environment. Uh, you're, 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 it, it's, like camels, it's like a famous way of creating a precedent. Obviously what you're really saying is you will plan to sell technology that you view as consumer that's clearly dual purpose to a nation that you are not, that you're adversary with. By the way, that's a perspective and you should make that argument but you're trying to make two arguments at once. And I'm just telling you, be feel free to make that argument. I respect you for it, especially if you actually made it. I'm making the other argument, and I'm going to fight for the other argument. And America is behind me on this. Uh, I'm just happy I'm the moderator. <laughs> spent half my life doing Tai Chi. I really revere Chinese culture. And I would be remiss to say that I, like most Americans, I believe, believe we should have very s severe restrictions on exporting our enormous advantage to China. I hope we can reach a place where China and America and its allies can actually work together, but I think we're very far away from that in a harmonious relationship, which is the way a relationship at some point could work. But um, I think 20 years ago when I said we wouldn't sell our weapons of war to China, it was controversial. In America, that's viewed as a banality. And I think being open about the fact that we're in a these these web, these are these at the margin are technologies that can and should be used in the West to defend the West, like in Ukraine, like in Israel, but they are at the end uh, weapons uh, technologies that will define who controls the world order, and I'm very very in favor of that world order being controlled by the West, primarily by America and its allies. That doesn't mean that we should be xenophobic. Or, uh, or engage in, in bigotry, certainly not in America. And one of the core things we have to avoid in the West is anything that even smacks of something that's xenophobic, that's our core strength, is actually to integrate minorities, of which I include myself. But I do think that we who are tech leaders and business leaders, and I dare say uh, other leaders, should be very clear that we are going to do everything. And I believe Americans, technology built in America should only be sold to American allies and certainly should be made available to all Western governments. But, but don't you think one can do both things at the same time? No. Because we have uh, an economic security uh, that is being developed, that is being applied. We have uh, our 5G toolbox to make sure that we have trusted vendors. But well, that doesn't you, prevent you, you our president uh, to have a uh, summit with uh, Chinese leaders. I'm very in favor of summits, and I and then you're you're I I believe there are two kind of voters: those who are single issue and those that have no power. And so you're talking about various issues with China, and I'm not an expert in those issues, but I am somewhat of an expert in building weapons of war with software and using AI. And and in those things, I do not think there can be transfer of technology. In the other areas, well, you know, I mean, we should be in dialogue, and I I. I do think understanding a great and interesting culture that is the culture of, of China is very important, including for our own development. And, it, and doing it a way where we're not xenophobic and open is crucial. But I would draw a bright line there, and I very much do everything I can to see that's enforced. First of all, you have to disambiguate between cyber and a weapon system. So I think what would concern most people in, in the Munich Security Conference, I would imagine, would be how do we find uh, hidden adversaries in a complicated war environment like we have uh, with Russia where you can actually only field our weapons with enhanced AI software because you're dealing with an emission suppressed environment. Um, I'm not in favor of regulation in that environment at all except for to restrict the technologies going to our adversaries. So I don't think that's, that's so like just, so mi military technology restricting use, my version of that would be, yes, we should restrict Western companies from selling to adversarial countries. I assume we agree on that, but then in that context, I'm, I'm not in favor of restrictions because
basically you're restricting our ability to build it, while of course Russia, China, and Iran are, are definitively not going to restrict, and I think we probably agree on that, but I think you have to be very, very clear that uh, and then the, the more nuanced area is, if you say in the cyber context, uh, restriction is very hard because de facto, it's not what we build, but if we were to build cyber uh, attacking devices and you restrict our ability to build them, certainly Russia, China, Iran, which are very, North Korea, which are very, very good at building these systems, would have an advantage or they have a disadvantage. Th then you get to the consumer internet version, um, and I, I mean, restrictions work very well for my product, as long as they're fairly applied. And I do think if you ask people in, in America, there is a, in tech, there is a somewhat of a concern that they, these, these will not be fairly applied because the U.S. tech scene is the dominant in the world. Um, and I, that's less my worry, but if we're being honest about it, that is a concern. Um, and I think it's one that people um, uh, worry about a lot. I worry about that less. I, I have one worry as somebody who spent a lot of time in Europe. My dissertation was written in Europe, in Germany. Uh, I think of myself in some ways as partially part of the European project and would like to see Europe succeed. Uh, in ec economics, there's something called a paradox of thrift, which is a country that saves too much ends up being poor. It's actually, we classic progressives love this theory because it's one of the reasons we want to spend more um, I really worry that the idea, not your idea, but an idea of this legislation is that uh, restrictions will help the European tech scene catch up, which I want. I worry it will backfire um, because America is currently not, it's just so far ahead. 84% of, of tech, of the top 50 tech companies in the world are American. I would imagine it'll be 95% in five years. And I, if this actually is about protecting consumers, I'm roughly in favor of it. But if it's about protecting the European tech scene, I'm very worried it'll backfire. And you know, Europe doesn't have a great GDP growth story right now. And I think that is a very big risk. And one of the ways America and Europe are very different. And, and as somebody who wants Europe to win, uh, and it owes Europe a lot, I, I worry about that. Because what we have seen is that you need competition as the fundamental driver in, in what you do. But what we have seen in Europe is that that has become increasingly difficult because of entrenchment. And the last thing would be to say, you say there are no tech people in government, but it's legitimate for citizens no, no, to enough. choose not their uh, representatives, and it's legitimate for those representatives to pass legislation. I, I'm probably the most prominent critic of Silicon Valley in tech. I completely agree with your criticisms of the, of the consumer internet world. I think they've, they're, they're cancerous on our society. I wish we had regulation on them in America. I, I think TikTok should be banned in America. I think, I, I think the, 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 their erudition and corrosion of our cognitive capacities are largely the result of these. I could go on and on. I, I, so, I, 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 I agree with you, and bring your legislation to America, I'll support you. Um, but I, I, I just, um, I, I uh, and I do know that there are very technical people in government. I have a very successful business in Denmark and all over Europe, and they're very technical people. But it is an issue for all Western democracies that the technical specificity of large language modules especially exceeds the capacities of all but the most technical people. And that is a problem we all are gonna face in every context. And there's, that's, I, I um, and, and, and then on the, um, I, I, I think, and so what I think we, we and obviously in the competitive, combative context, we have to find ways to actually share data and share software and share all these things. Um, and the last thing is just a lagging concern that I think all of us who care about Europe have, that there is a tech scene issue. I, I would love to believe that AI uh, at the edge, which we also believe in, will be more important. And I, that, but right now, there is this issue that is an unspoken issue between 
America and Europe where we have lots of issues at home, everyone's aware of them, uh, but we don't have a, a uh, GDP growth issue and the reason we don't is because we have incredible, an incredible tech scene and, um, and I do think it would behoove us to find ways, including regulatory, to work better together. Yes, Michaela Kufta from Deutsche Welle. My question is to Mr. Karp, um, since you are so aligned with Ms. Vestager on the question of regulation, I wonder whether you as entrepreneur would then also see you in a responsibility to make watertight regulations that would prevent anything like Cambridge Analytica to happen again or for future election interference with the use of AI? A hundred percent. The Cambridge Analytica thing is, is completely BS, and, but I'd be very happy to, look, I'm in favor of regulation that gets enforced. To pretend that the arguments that the law is actually always uh, applied fairly and evenly, like in Denmark, in Germany, ist Svaxen. And it is komplett Svaxen, es geht nach hinten los. Und wenn du eine Tech-Szene in Deutschland haben willst, muss man bescheidener mit diesen Regeln und fair mit diesen Regeln umgehen. And obviously... I don't I mean, speak German, but I think I got okay. the gist of it. Obviously... <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, everybody in my situation... The reason why we're actually in favor of these rules, commercially, is we know we have the best products. I want your rules to be at first. I want transparency. But what I don't want to see is all of a sudden every product can only be the product built in your local country. And zu glauben, dass das nie passiert, ist auch dummes Denken, vorgeschobene Argumente, und du verlierst Menschen wie mich, wie ich, die eben auf der Seite sind von Europa und will Europa verteidigen. And so, of course we need transparency, of course we need these rules, but you know, then they have to be implied. You know, Wittgenstein has this, this thing that I love. I, to, to believe you're following a rule is not to follow a rule. You want the rules? I'm in favor of them. I'll defend them in America with my 50 million followers. They have to actually be applied for real, and they're not always applied for real. And if you want a great example of a place that applies them for real, go to Denmark, watch how they do procurement. You have the Danish in, Danes in charge of this. I'll be your biggest ally, and so will tech. And that's my real worry. And all these fake, like, uh, election interference, I'm, I'm happy to fight election interference all day and help you do it. But you then, the rule has to be the rule.